Energy Shield is definitely one of the coolest skills that the Sorceress has access to. That being said, it's also one of the most confusing aspects to the overall defensive kit that you can put on something like the Immortal Sorceress. I want to make a video breaking down how Energy Shield works, and that made me realize that I'd need to cover how every type of damage reduction kind of works in concert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your average Energy Shield Nova Sorceress, break down how the game will actually try to apply damage to your character, finally explain whether or not you really need resistances on the build, and hopefully give you that entire breakdown so that you can make your own itemization choices moving forward if you're trying to build the tankiest character in the game. So there are two things to understand about Energy Shield right off the bat. First and foremost, that it will only ever absorb up to 95% of incoming damage. And we're going to use a lowercase a on absorb there because there's actually a stat in the game called absorb and we don't want to get those two confused. Secondly, its synergy from telekinesis will reduce how much mana damage you take. At max synergy, you're only going to be taking three quarters of a point of mana damage for every one point of damage absorbed by Energy Shield itself. Looking at a pretty average energy shield build sorceress, we really want to pay attention to all of the different defensive stats that you have on this build. So your life, your mana, how much flat damage reduction and flat magic damage reduction that we have, our actual resistances, along with any percentage damage reductions that we have. Oh, and lastly, we also want to take a look at absorb and magic absorb. And let's just say the vast majority of these stats probably do a lot of things that you never really expected them to do. For people who are not aware, this is how the game will actually attempt to apply damage to you in order. So first, the incoming damage will check if you have bone armor or cyclone armor. Then it will hit your energy shield. After that, it'll hit flat amounts of damage reduced and magic damage reduced. After that, it'll check your resistances, see if you have any sources of negative resistance like lower res on, then check your percentage absorb, and then your flat integer absorb. And then lastly, it's going to check excess damage reduced as well as excess magic damage reduced. And if looking at the chart doesn't make it abundantly clear, each one of these different types of damage reductions act on very specific types of damage. Most notably, Energy Shield is going to work on every damage type except for poison damage. And that's also really important for what we're going to cover in just a minute. Just to be able to show off everything, I included two buffs that you can technically get if you were to equip certain Rune Word armors. If you had Rain Rune Word giving you access to Cyclone armor, as well as Bone Rune Word giving you access to Bone armor, you could theoretically have every type of damage reduction in the game on a single Sorceress character. And to highlight that, what I'm going to do is show you an example where a monster's incoming attack is carrying a thousand physical damage as well as a thousand fire damage. So following our handy table here, we're going to notice that some of that physical damage is going to be offset by our bone armor and some of that fire damage is going to be offset by our cyclone armor. Of our physical damage, 155 of that is going to be offset by our bone armor and then 208 of the fire damage is going to be offset by cyclone armor. So before anything else happens, the incoming damage has been reduced to 845 physical as well as 792 fire. Now, at some points in these calculations, I'm going to hit decimal points, so I'll just go ahead and round those down just so we continue to work with whole numbers. After Bone and Cyclone Armor, this is where Energy Shield is now going to absorb incoming damage, and it's going to redirect that to our mana instead of our health. We also need to calculate how much damage has been offset so that we can understand how much of a hit our mana pool is going to take. Since it's going to reduce the incoming damage by 95%, that means that only 5% of the damage will be left over. As I said, we're always going to round down, so that's going to leave a total of 42 physical damage and 39 fire damage coming out the sorceress before her other types of damage reductions. Just to show how much damage was mitigated, here's the math. It looks like roughly 1,555 damage was stopped by our energy shield. Because we have maxed out telekinesis, we're only going to receive three quarters of that damage as mana damage. So we multiply that by 0.75 or 75% of the damage mitigated and it looks like we're going to take 1,166 mana damage. Since our character starts off with 3,967 mana, that means she'll be left with a remaining mana total of 2,801. But we're not done yet. Now we need to look at our damage reduced by total and our magic damage reduced by total. Damage reduced by at first will only stop physical damage. Magic damage reduced by at first will only stop magic, fire, lightning, and cold. 
It'll completely ignore physical and poison. Flat damage reduced by values have a very interesting facet to them, which is that if they are greater than the incoming damage, at the end, they will actually reduce the other types of damage on the attack. Since our attack is carrying physical and fire, if we were to say have 50 damage reduction, as opposed to seven damage reduction here, that would eclipse the 42 incoming damage. That means that that eight leftover physical damage reduction would then go on to reduce any remaining fire, cold, lightning, and poison damage. The extra caveat there being that it would only stop incoming poison damage from the first frame of damage or the first amount of bitrate poison damage. Not only that, damage reduced by are also less effective against incoming attacks that deal damage as bitrate as opposed to dealing damage in a single hit. So the examples here would be Diablo's Firestorm or Diablo's Lightning Hose. To be able to stop a single point of physical damage from Diablo's Firestorm, you actually need 25 damage reduced by. And that cool interaction with magic damage reduced by goes the opposite direction. It will actually decrease any incoming physical damage on the same attack if there were to be leftover damage reduced by. In our example, to keep things simple, we do not have any excess values here, so it's only going to reduce the incoming damage and not have any secondary effects. So taking our seven damage reduced by and our 28 damage reduced by, the seven is going to subtract from the 42 physical damage and the 28 is going to subtract from the 39 fire damage. So after that little bit of math, we still have 35 physical damage as well as 11 fire damage that needs to be mitigated in some way, or we're gonna be taking that as life damage at the end. Here is where our resistances and any sources of negative resistance would come in. For physical damage reduction, we have 10% resistance, and for fire, we have 75% resistance. Nothing that interesting here, just reduce the incoming damage by 10% and the incoming fire damage by 75%. So we're left over with 31 physical damage and just about two fire damage. At this point, we need to look at sources of percentage absorb that our character has. Now, the only versions of these that actually exist are fire, lightning, and cold for percentage absorb. The interesting part to understand about absorb is not only does it reduce incoming damage, but it also heals you for that amount of damage. So for you to get the maximum benefit from absorb, you actually need to have already lost some amount of life. Two other interesting things to know about it is that percentage absorb is actually capped at 40% and it will both reduce incoming damage and heal before any effects like plus flat absorb. What it basically means is that if you are at less than full life, you basically get double the effective percentage absorb. Whereas if you're at 100% life, you just reduce incoming damage by its percentage. So here we actually have 15% fire absorb, and we're assuming that the sorceress was at 100% life to start. What this basically means for us, since we have such a low number, is that we're going to reduce incoming fire damage by one because we're rounding down. But just remember that life totals actually aren't whole numbers in Diablo 2. You actually can have decimal points worth of life. The game just can't show you that. So we are now left with 31 physical damage and one incoming fire damage. The last two things that we would need to check is flat values of absorb, which we do happen to have some of. We actually have 16 magic absorb. And if you remember, magic damage reduction applied to fire, cold, and lightning. The weird part is that magic absorb actually doesn't. This stat specifically only absorbs incoming magic damage. So for our calculations, it doesn't do anything at all, but it's just interesting to note that magic damage reduced by and magic absorb actually apply to different types of incoming damage. So the last thing that we need to look at is just how much damage did our sorceress end up taking? Well, if we take her life total of 1243 and we subtract the total amount of damage, which equals out to 32, we end up with 1,211 remaining life on our sorceress, starting from 2,000 total damage on the attack. Now, what are the really important things to understand about all of these different parts of the calculation? One, I think there's generally a misunderstanding that if you have energy shield, you don't need resistances at all and that really doesn't paint the entire picture. Nothing including bone armor, cyclone armor, or energy shield applies to poison damage. And in fact, the only two things that actually reduce incoming poison damage are poison resistance itself, as well as excess magic damage reduced if the attack happened to be carrying physical and poison damage, and it only stops the first tick of poison damage itself. 
This is why people use something like Gladiator's Bane on the Immortal Sorceress. It has a massive amount of damage reduced by and magic damage reduced by. But it actually has a third stat that's incredibly important for you to understand just how hard you can get wrecked by poison damage. Most people know that there's a difficulty penalty for resistances. So if we're looking at the fire res that I have right now, you'll see that we have minus 100 fire resistance just from being in held difficulty. The same goes for poison, but what a lot of people don't know is that there's a second stat that you most entirely always ignore, and that is poison length reduction. What poison length reduction says is that if you had 100% poison length reduction, poison will only be applied for a single frame. The opposite is true. If you have negative 100% poison length reduction, you actually take poison for twice the total length that you normally would. And most people never have poison length reduction on their character. That's why when you get poisoned in game, you seem to be poisoned forever. It's because you're actually taking that poison damage for twice as long as you normally would. So Gladiator's Bane carrying 50% poison length reduction doesn't decrease poison length by 50%. It actually only decreases poison length to 1.5 times its total length. That's right. If you had negative 100 poison res and you had negative 100 poison length reduction, not only would you take double poison damage, but you would take it for twice as long. That's four times the total damage that you take from any poison source in the game. So this is why first you absolutely need to make sure that your poison resistance is capped on an energy shield sorceress. This step right here, the damage reduced by and the magic damage reduced by, has the greatest impact after energy shield for reducing incoming damage. It's not uncommon for immortal sorceresses to stack 40 and 50 damage reduced by, as well as stack a ton of magic damage reduced by. Since any incoming attack is not necessarily going to have multiple damage types on it, you can't rely on the excess reducing damage later. So you need to be able to so you need to be able to reduce as much incoming at first as possible. If you aren't running the immortal sorceress, if you're just trying to use a powerful energy shield, you absolutely still need resistances. This 1243 life total was with 45 life skillers and a call to arms on swap for battle orders. So after my meager amount of damage reduction, if I had zero or even negative resistance, I would be taking this full amount, let's call it 46 damage here, or even double that if I was at negative resistance, which would be 92 damage. And while 92 damage doesn't really sound like a lot, remember that when your character only has 1000 or 1200 life, 92 is a huge percentage of that. 92 life represents 7% of our total life, and that's pretty massive when you remember the fact that you can get attacked multiple times within the same second. And lastly, there are really interesting effects in the game that most people don't really understand how it works. And let me showcase that here. When you have more life than you do have mana, monsters like Bale as well as Succubi in Act 5 will actually cast something called a Blood Mana Curse on you. And the interesting thing about it is it actually doesn't do damage. And I'll highlight that here in just a second. So here we have the blood mana and I'm going to start spamming Nova. You'll notice that our life is going down and our mana isn't. If I cast this fast enough and for long enough, we get to an interesting part where every time I try to cast it, the sorceress actually says I need mana. She cannot cast any spells right now and it's because my life total is less than the mana cost of Nova. You'll see once I get up past it, I can now cast Nova again and when I do, I'm reduced back down. This ability doesn't deal damage to the sorceress. It instead uses life instead of mana for spell casting. An energy shield does not mitigate this or reduce it in any way and neither do any of your resistances. So when taking large amounts of incoming damage and getting hit with something like blood mana, where you think you are immortal on your sorceress, you're actually hugely tapping your life pool. So even when those small little bits of incoming damage actually hit your sorceress, they can be drastically amplified because your life total will be at a super low amount. Likewise, there are two other scenarios where energy shield could get you killed instead of keeping you alive. One, the spell does eventually run out. While our energy shield lasts for 1,080 seconds, that's just one time getting up to go grab your DiGiorno's pizza or trying to answer a phone call and coming back to the game before you rebuff yourself, where all of a sudden, halfway through your farming experience, energy shield is going to drop. And if you are solely built around surviving when 95% of incoming damage is completely mitigated, when that energy shield drops, you're gonna die. 
The second scenario is the fact that there are still mana burn monsters in the game. While the mana burn bug was fixed, natural monsters that do mana damage as well as mana burn elite monsters still hit you for an incredible amount of mana damage. On top of that, every time they hit you, their normal attack damage is also going to get eaten up by your energy shield. It's actually very easy to accidentally take a bunch of incoming damage and have energy shield drop where you would typically need to rebuff yourself. Or let's say your battle command battle orders runs off halfway through your farming session. There are just so many different scenarios where you really cannot rely on having these types of defensives up all of the time, and you may get yourself gacked. So while you don't need resistances, and you don't even necessarily need a lot of damage reduction, not having those stats on your build is going to be a lot more of a liability than just kind of hoping that energy shield is going to carry it. But there you have it, a complete breakdown of both how energy shield is going to work for you in the game, as well as all of the other damage reduction types that you can stack on your character to actually make them truly immortal. I hope that this video helps to save some hardcore lives out there, as well as some people playing solo self founder on single player who are trying to truly live the immortal sorceress dream. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.